Omni-Man in the comics is so powerful that with a single punch, he was able to send Alan the Alien off a planet well into orbit, which if this planet is anything like Earth, and Alan shot past the distance of something like the International Space Station, would mean that Omni-Man sent him roughly 480 kilometers or 300 miles up, punching Alan so hard that he reached the needed Earth escape velocity of near 40,000 kilometers or 25,000 miles per hour, if not a bit more. As we see from the Viltrumite Conquest, higher tier Viltrumites like Nolan are able to somehow casually break apart a 400 ton, being 800,000 pounds or 363,000 kilograms of solid tempered steel blocks encasing their bodies, with tempered steel being rapidly heated and cooled, is much more malleable, resistant to any kind of wear and tear, and overall can be several times stronger than untreated steel. With this tempered steel block, likely having no expense spared, having a tensile strength of something like 100,000 PSI, this block would take something around a conservative estimate of 5,000 to 10,000 kilonewtons of force to mechanically break this thing apart, or the equivalent force of Omni-Man bench pressing upwards of 1 million kilograms or 2,250,000 pounds. Omni-Man also fights to a stalemate against a character with the power to bust apart worlds known as Mean Supreme. With both Omni-Man and Supreme possessing the strength needed to carve their way straight through the Earth to the other side, traveling a distance of 12,739 kilometers or 7,916 miles, withstanding a whole lot of molten magma, the inner course temperature of 5,200 degrees Celsius or 9,392 degrees Fahrenheit, and a crushing pressure that is 3.6 million times stronger than if you were standing at sea level, which Omni-Man does again, this time with his son Invincible and another Viltrumite, punching through planet Viltrum whose gravity is 1.25 times that of the Earth, making this thing 1.25 times as massive, and just as easy for him to pummel through. Comic book Omni-Man's body is so durable that even after suffering a severe puncture wound that disemboweled his intestines, which normally would cause death to occur after a couple of excruciating hours, Omni Man is instead back up on his feet in just two weeks. Omni Man also survives yet another beatdown from the Viltrumite's leader Thrag, this time giving Omni Man a severe case of skull crushing that causes something known as globalization, meaning that Omni Man's eye has now fully popped out of its now non existent socket. But Omni Man is good to keep standing so everyone can bow down before their new leader instead of him screaming in severe pain. Omni Man's body is impervious to practically any weapon than anyone on Earth can think to throw at him. Planet-tearing heat vision as hot as the 10,000 degree Fahrenheit or near 6,000 degrees Celsius sun's surface merely destroys his clothes, and he can literally fly through weaker Viltrumites so easily that they splatter apart just by touching him. Omni-Man is said to be able to withstand temperatures near or at absolute zero, being the coldest possible temperature in the universe, a temperature so cold that all atoms literally stop moving and any living creature would be one neat frozen popsicle. Omni-Man's Viltrumite brain can survive completely depleted of oxygen for something around a couple of hours, give or take a few, which is remarkable because normally the human brain after one minute sees brain cells beginning to die in droves. After three minutes, serious brain damage has occurred. After 10 minutes, recovery is unlikely. And after 15 minutes, recovery in someone is virtually impossible. However, like humans, humans, Viltrumites seem to need to eat food almost as consistently, with the exception of being able to go without water for equally long periods of time, unlike humanity that can't go without water for longer than three days. An ability that likely helps with space travel, as Viltrumites can reportedly hold their breath for up to two weeks, pointing to the fact that their bodies, other than being insanely efficient with their oxygen usage, may be able to run on other sources of energy like Superman does with sunlight, but more likely they're just plot-breakingly efficient. When attacking the Guardians of the Globe in the comic, Omni-Man pretty much wipes them out instantly, moving so fast that none of them can react, including Red Rush, who is so fast that he can literally travel around the world saving people while maintaining a conversation with his girlfriend during a picnic, who doesn't even notice he's gone. Basically, this dude is moving so fast that he is literally in two places at once, if not more. To pull this off, Red Rush would have to be 
moving well past the speed that light can travel, being over 1 billion kilometers or 671 million miles an hour, likely traveling two or three times that speed to outwit the 30 to 60 second frame per second, that is the frame rate of the human eye, yet Omni-Man moves so fast as to blindside and crush this guy before wiping out all of his teammates? I know in the show, the Guardians at least put up something of a fight, with War Woman landing some clean hits, causing Omni-Man to drop unconscious at the end of the whole ordeal. But here, Omni-Man simply runs right through them and proceeds to Kung Fu chop the mortal's head clean off. Omni-Man's speed even sees him traveling from Earth to planet Thraxa in about one week, which is in a different galaxy. This planet is said to specifically lie within the Virgo Cluster, a cluster of galaxies that is 65.23 million light years away from Earth, meaning that if Nolan took seven days to fly there, then he would be traveling at 3,401,278,571 times the speed of light, all made possible because Viltrumites can perform subspace jumps or basically teleport. By the time Omni-Man had his son Mark, he is known to be around several thousand years old, thanks to the fact that as Viltrumites age, the parts of their DNA involved in slowing their aging become what is called upregulated, or otherwise more active, causing them to age slower the older they get. And this upregulation of all things Viltrumite also causes their offspring to become more like the rest of the Viltrumite race the older they get, and less like the parent of another species. But as powerful as Omni-Man is in the original story, he does have some pretty big limitations and weaknesses. Just like me playing something of a guessing game for which character to sink dozens of hours into for each of these videos, while Omni-Man is immune to all cold, he can be harmed by extreme heat from something like plasma, certain sound frequencies can paralyze him, and despite the fact he can easily heal injuries to his muscle tissue, if he receives the same damage to his heart or brain, his body will cease to be able to repair itself, owed to the fact that unlike their outside skin and tissue, Viltrumite's insides are practically as vulnerable as a human's, so much so that they can be killed in one shot by sending something as simple as a small explosive down their throat. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Despite being a different species, Omni-Man shows all the same indicators that humans do when lying, being that our heart rate increases, breathing shallows, eye contact is more avoidant, and facial expressions along with tone of voice just doesn't match the words they're saying. But my god, he just might not care. So if you want to see if this Omni-Man is more powerful than his animated self, or dive into other characters like Batman and tap on these videos, and I'll see you in the next one.